For the next 10 minutes, you'll be watching a demonstration of the correct procedure for swaging aluminium ferrules to wire rope. Please pay close attention as failure to correctly operate the equipment could result in serious injury to you or others. Before operating the swaging press, you need to be fully trained in its operation and be authorised by management. Watching this instructional presentation in full is part of your training program. Thank you Gunnar, you've completed the assessment. Congratulations. Your safety is the company's first priority and a clean and obstruction free work area is the starting point. Before operating the press, a series of checks need to be made. Put on your protective gear and use the provided checklist. Make sure the power lead is secure and turn on the press. Adjust the pressure setting to minimum, test the hydraulics and inspect the machine's safety guard. Satisfied that everything is okay, complete the startup check record sheet. For this demonstration, a large diameter wire rope will be used, but the same procedure applies to all sizes. Your job sheet will indicate the required wire rope size and length. In this example, the rope's diameter is 16 millimetres. It is important to match the rope specifications on the job sheet to the manufacturer's label on the spool to confirm you have the correct wire rope. This cross-check will allow you to make sure the finished product complies with working load limits. If you are required to cut the rope using a power saw, you must be given training before using the device. Your job sheet also indicates what size ferrule is required and any fittings needed for the eye loop. In this demonstration, a thimble will be used to allow a hard eye to be produced. Next, the wire rope, ferrules and ancillary fittings must be checked against the wire rope pressing chart. Using vernier calipers, measure the rope's diameter and refer to the chart to find the correct size ferrule to be used and the correct amount of pressure required to complete the press. For a 16mm wire rope, the correct ferrule size is 18mm and the correct pressure 130 tonnes. The chart can also be used to cross-check ancillary fittings to make sure they are the correct size or appropriate for the wire you will be swaging. If the ferrule's manufacturer has stamped the specifications on the ferrule, this can also be referred to when checking for correct size and application. The correct size die must also be selected and while they are clearly marked, they should be checked for accuracy again by referring to the press chart. For a 16mm wire rope with a size 18 ferrule, the die code number is 18. Measured with the calipers, the bore diameter should be 36mm as indicated on the chart. Closely inspect the die to make sure it's undamaged and no cracks are starting to appear. If a die is damaged or the rope and ferrules don't meet the necessary standards, don't proceed. Tag faulty equipment or materials and notify authorised management immediately. On the press itself, backing plates or adapters are required for certain jobs. Make sure the appropriate plates are properly installed. When small dies are inserted, they should sit higher than the backing plate. With all dies, make sure the correct locating bolts are used to anchor them firmly into place. If necessary, use thread tape to produce a secure fit so that the die cannot move. Check the die's alignment, making sure all surfaces and edges are perfectly parallel to guarantee correct closure. The die's inner bore must be free of impurities and dust. Grease it with a suitable lubricant to minimise friction and stop ferrules from sticking to the die. Before you cut the wire rope to length, check your mark back measurements are accurate and have been clearly indicated with a permanent marker or similar marking pen. Place the ferrule onto the rope. 
loop the rope back and feed it through the ferrule to form the sling's eye. With large wire rope, it's important to maintain a strong grip until it's securely through the ferrule so the end of the rope doesn't spring back. The amount of tail, the end of the rope, will be adjusted when the ferrule is held in position by the press. Hold the rope and ferrule in place with hands well clear of the die and close the press jaws just enough to grip the ferrule. Now the size of the eye loop and length of the rope's tail can be adjusted by pulling back on the rope. If you are making thimble eyes, insert the thimble and tighten the loop leaving a gap between the end of the thimble and the ferrule. This gap should also be the diameter of the rope. At the opposite end of the ferrule, the tail should extend approximately half the diameter of the rope. This is to allow for the ferrule's expansion under the presser's pressure. Set the pressure switch to the limit indicated on the wire rope press chart, in this case 130 tonnes. While standing behind the safety guard, close the press jaws until the dies just meet, then immediately release the pressure. If you keep the pressure applied, or apply additional downward force, this too can shatter a die and cause serious personal injury. The pressed ferrule will have a raised edge at the join. This is flashing and it needs to be removed. For slings made with 24mm diameter rope or larger, an angle grinder can be used. While on smaller ferrules, the flashing should be smoothed off using a linishing belt or sander. Measure the finished diameter of the ferrule and cross-check with the ferrule pressing chart to confirm that it's correct. Also look for any cracks or imperfections in the pressed ferrule. This comparison shows how much the ferrule's length expands under pressure. After pressing, the rope's tail should be visible but not prominent. Too short and the sling is dangerous to use and has to be discarded. When a thimble has been inserted in the eye, make sure it's secure and not distorted. Check the gap between the thimble and the ferrule. After pressing, it should be half the rope's diameter. For eye fittings and sling terminations, always press in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. If you are unsure, ask management first. For steel swage fittings, a swaged reduction greater than 14% could shatter the die and result in injury to the operator. To complete the sling, another ferrule and thimble will be added to the opposite end of the rope. Mark back points will be measured and marked. and the rope cut to the specified length. The ferrule fitted, the eye loop made, and the thimble added. Again, the operator holds the rope in position until the ferrule is gripped in the die, then closes the guard and completes the press. The flashing is trimmed off and the seam made smooth with a sander or on larger ferrules, an angle grinder. Using the vernier calipers and the press chart, the ferrule is checked for accuracy. The finished sling is measured to double check it meets the work order specifications. If it's too long or so big that it's impractical to measure, double check your calculations instead. If there's any doubt, ask a manager. When you have inspected everything and are satisfied with the completed job, send the unit to the test department for proof testing and stamping.